Hello. Hi, guys. Uh, I'm Jose Luis Martinez. I come from Barcelona PM Mongers Group. Uh, and I'm here to talk a bit uh, about the Perl AWS SDK. I'm here to teach you how to use it, and I hope to teach you a bit about how to hack on it. So uh, the thing is that uh, this SDK is, is the brainchild of my love-hate relationship with CPAN. Because uh, if you go to do stuff with AWS, and who knows what AWS is? Hope that everybody, best thing since coffee, maybe? Um, and if you're a Perl developer, you go to CPAN and you look up uh, how to consume services, and you find lots of modules that do stuff. Uh, the only thing is that, that, that there were lots, but lots were missing. And since we, we at Apsi, there are like heavy AWS users, we wanted all support for all services. And there is a very special module called AWS Clear Wrapper, very intelligent, that just shells off to the Python CLI. Okay, it supports all services. Uh, but it, it, it is kind of slow. So um, I really want Perl to have native support for all types of services. Also, when you go around CPAN looking at the modules that were there at the time, you would find that different, auth different authors had different opinions. And AWS has like lots of regions where you can provision your infrastructure or your services. And each author would just go and say, OK, I'm in the US. I love the US. That's the default region. If you, don't, if you just instan instantiate an object and don't tell it what region to put stuff in, it would just go to the US. But of course, lots of European authors too, so they love Europe. And what happens if you're in Asia? Uh, so, so the, Really, you, you get lots of mad people everywhere because, uh, because of, of these default decisions made. And it's OK, but I would prefer that I'd be explicit about where I want to put stuff. And, uh, and of course, if I didn't tell a service where to provision stuff, just blow up. So uh, another thing is that every module author would have uh, his preferred HTTP library. So, and in a very Perl fashion, more than one way to do it, we would find people using L LWP, HTTP Tiny, Curl, Perl, Mojo User Agent, everything. Uh, so really, what would I expect from a Perl SDK? that covers all services to still be Tim Toby. So make the HTTP client pluggable. Uh, also, more stuff. Once you get into using various regions, you would find subtle bugs in, in some modules that wouldn't support some of the regions because they have name changes in the DNS name. So when you try to provision something in China, uh, lots of mod modules will not form the name correctly, so you won't be able to consume services in China. Uh, and I would expect that Pro had uh, a vast support for all regions. Uh, also, credentials. In AWS, there are lots of ways to, to identify yourself, and lots of module authors were not aware of the ways to identify yourself. So uh, support for STS assume role, federation, that stuff normally is not there. So um, I would expect that credential handling, that we, that we could support all the types of credential handling that AWS puts in our, at our disposition. So, and another thing, that, that it's just that I want up-to-date APIs. AWS is uh, making changes 
as a, like weekly, you get new stuff added to the APIs. And when you go to your module, if it hasn't been updated in like six months because the author just, just wanted some subset of functionality and doesn't care about the rest, uh, you couldn't get it. So uh, before pause, we had the, yeah, before pause, we had this scenario, bunch of modules, everyone in their shape and form, and I would want something more like this. Uh, so let's see how simple it is to, to use. Let's do pause 101. For the, the users that want to create some type of service or just want to call some type of service in AWS with POS. First thing is that we have to authenticate ourselves. And here's one recommendation. Never burn credentials in your code. I mean never. <laughs> uh, so the, the first thing that, that for the for the newbie using pause is to declare in your environment some access key secret key these access key secret keys are generated with the service called IAM you generate a user it gives you two pieces of information you put these in environment variables or in this file with this format and pause will use that what else would, do we have to know to consume services? That each service in AWS has a service class in POS. So uh, do you know the service EC2, Elastic Compute Cloud? No. Uh, POS has a class for that. It's called EC2. SQS, the simple queue service, has a class for that too. On those classes, those objects, have methods that when you call EC2, like for example, has a, um, a method called run instances that happens to provision a server in wherever, wh wherever you told it to. And SQS, since it's a queue service, has methods to send messages, receive messages, delete messages. Uh, so to get the ability to call a service, all we, all we need is a, an instance of that service, of a service class. So we tell, we use pause, and we tell pause to create a, an EC2 service object. EC2 is what's called, is a regional service. So we need to tell it to, to instance that this instance will be bound to EU West. So whenever I call run instances to provision a server, it will do it in EU West one. Okay, I am on the other hand is a service that it's, it's global. You don't need to specify a region. So you just don't tell pause to, to use a region. We, uh, so EC2 needs to know the region to operate. I am doesn't. Also, an instance is bound to the region and to what we call a caller. The callers are pluggable, and we'll see a bit, bit later how to plug them in and how to write our own. And to a credential provider. Uh, but this is. This is just so you just so you know the newbie can go just with the defaults and say, okay, give me an EC2 object for EU, EU West one. And once you get an instance, start calling methods party time. So when you're going to call a method, of course methods have parameters and we use key values for for the name of the parameter and value that we want to pass. If it's a string, a string. If it's a number, a number. 
And we'll see in the documentation that sometimes pause refers to the thing that holds this as a, a complex value or an object. The thing is that you don't have to instance, to instance those objects for pause. You just pass in a hash graph, and pause will auto instance the, the object that was supposed to go here. And for arrays, you just create the array. If here go when complex objects, the same. Pause will auto instance the objects for you. So basically, you'll be calling run instances on the EC2 object and saying, OK, I want type instance type this uh, user data this well, okay we have a special data structure that are called maps that the AWS APIs use um, when you see a map object also don't instance it just pass in the key values and uh, and possible instance that map for you and the return from the APIs uh, really are, are full-blown objects. So uh, if service X returned uh, a result, that result would be of type method one result. It's an object with its properties. And those properties come uh, in it come in object form. So if it has a, an X accessor, we get the value of X just uh, with accessors. If it's a complex object, the same. So that's how you call a service in AWS. That's pause 101. The presentation is over. Sorry. You, you've graduated. Let's try to do something more difficult. Uh, talk about authentication and this is important because it's what it's one of the it's 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 one of the reasons that I, I set out to write pause because really when 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 you're working with AWS you have the keys that those access keys and secret keys are the keys to the biggest data center centers in the world so Basically, anyone that has your keys has access to this and eventually to even more. So um, let's talk about our authentication. AWS, I already told you that it authenticates with two pieces of information. And for pros, there's a third piece of a session token. Okay, Access key, secret key are the basics. And then there's a session token. Uh, for temporal, uh, for temporal access, pause has pause credential classes, and each class is specialized in getting the credentials from some place. There's uh, there's one that gets the credentials from the environment. There's one that gets it from a dot AWS credentials file that I showed you earlier. Uh, but it's also able to go to, to special places. So let's see first the default. The default is what we call a provider chain, and it just uses instances of the environment, the file, and the, and the metadata uh, uh, providers. So it really tries to call one, and if one returns, uh, returns access key and secret key, it stays with that one. If not, it tries the next one. So that's the default for pause. So if you don't tell pause anything, it will try to find your credentials in the environment, then in the file, and then in the, in the metadata service. And let's talk about the metadata service, because AWS gives us, gives us the possibility to, ex to assign to a server what's called an instance role. An instance role is giving a server the possibility to, to call the APIs from within the server. How do they do that? They generate access keys and secret keys and session tokens and put it in a special service that's called the metadata service. So an instance running in AWS 
can call the metadata service and say, give me temporary credentials. And that is fairly awesome because right now, when, uh, when you use the, the instance roles, you don't have the need to, to generate access keys and secret keys or a IAM users. You create a role, you declare what permissions that role has and you assign that role to an instance. And the SDKs do the magic for you that if they're running in an EC2 instance, they go to the metadata service and fetch the access keys and secret keys. So you don't have to manage those access keys and secret keys. So, and this is very powerful because even AWS is rotating those keys for you. They are temporary. So if your application leaks an access key and secret key, it won't last long. So, yeah, questions? So, uh, so it's it, it, they're the same type of credentials that permit that you call any API. Any API, those credentials have permission for. So uh, you can call SQS, you can call EC2, you can call uh, DynamoDB, for example. Okay. So uh, the, the, the important thing about this is that if we're doing production code with pause, we don't have to worry. Pro and dev can be the same, same code. Just instance the object and pause will handle for you where it gets the credentials. So if you're running inside AWS, just by putting the SDK inside an instance, it knows how to fetch those credentials. So, so, and dev can simply have the credentials in, an, uh, in a credentials file. And that way, when you put your code, it's, th it's the same code. No need for configurations, no need for saying, now you're in prod, now you're in dev. Also, uh, more things, since we're Tim Toady, we already have pluggable callers, so, each, uh, each of you can, can select with which caller you want to operate. So uh, by default, pause uses uh, pause net caller. It uses HTTP tiny, that's Perl core. And even if it's not core, it's tiny enough. So, uh, so we just go with that. But if, for example, you want to uh, operate behind an HTTPS proxy, HTTP Tiny doesn't play. HTTP Tiny doesn't have support for HTTPS proxies. So, uh, so we can just tell pause to use LWP caller. And this one was contributed by, by Dimitri, Dimitri Tikonov uh, because his environment is behind HTTPS proxies. Okay. Uh, another one that's there by default in the in the um, in the pause distribution is for uh, I basically use it to test that colors are really pluggable uh, not using it in production uh, and then we have a, another one that that's the mojo async color and this is another color to verify that uh, that asynchronous IO that pause is ready for a synchronous IO. So what it does is when you call, I instead of returning the, the result object synchronously, it returns a future that when that call returns, will have the result of the call that you did. So basically with one process, you can, you can, um, you can do like mm, you can do operations in all regions at the same time 
and as they are completing, your futures are getting their results and you can wait for them all or just uh, wait for the first one to, to succeed. No, it's not forking. It's using a synchronous I.O. So uh, it's, it's basically uh, doing the call, leaving the, the file descriptor there, and going on with the rest of the code. And then you, uh, um, the, you, have, to, you have to put the, how do you say it, the, the loop. You have to put the loop in to work. So you get, so when it gets the response, it puts it in the future. So um, there's um, th there's examples of this. So um, I, I, there's in the in in the distribution, there's an examples the directory that plays around with asynchronous stuff too. So um, strange things that that have come up. Uh, we have a special color. Uh, this one popped up on CPAN the, like a week ago, and it's it's quite curious. It's a, it's one of those things that that I didn't really expect. It's a, a Kinesis memory color. What's this doing? So uh, the author is saying, please instance pause, like you were going to get the Kinesis service but instance it with the memory color. And that memory color, what it does is emulate Kinesis without the HTTP calls. So he's implemented a mini Kinesis inside this color. And the thing is that the code that follows, it just works like, like it was calling the Kinesis service for you. But He's really implemented all these calls in Perl, and he's returning the results for you like, like you were calling the Kinesis service. So that, that means that you can test your code better without having to really, uh, to really consume the service or provision anything. Uh, there's also some colors that are, that are even hidden in the test suit. In the test suite, there's there's a recording color. That, that that's how I do tests. Normally, I do a script that does stuff with the services, and it records everything. And then, when it's put in playback mode, it starts returning the results instead of doing the HTTP calls. It just returns the recorded HTTP calls. And I think this is powerful enough because. We're talking about um, about doing lots of REST APIs, and and how how do you test those REST APIs without having lots of this infrastructure or test accounts or uh, and this helps this really helps and I think it's it's a, a pattern that other HTTP or that other REST based service libraries can can adopt just record calls, and if the caller uh, calls them in order, you can return the things that you recorded. So that makes your, the, the, the test suit uh, fairly, fairly stable. And uh, even this, uh, th this recording caller, I'm thinking about distributing, distributing it officially with pause because it's just in the test suit right now. Sorry? Yeah, uh, recording, yeah, they, uh, okay. The, the question is that if I implemented that myself, uh, the response is yes, okay. There are modules that do that on CPAN, but you can't record the, um, the whole HTTP request and response because AWS services, when you uh, identify yourself, you do a signature. That signature has a timestamp in it, and it's only valid for some time. So when you're doing the call, you're, uh, you're using a signature that only has uh, a special validity. So the, 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 you'll, every time you call, the HTTP request is not the same. 
it's it's different. And okay, and of course the pause does other other special stuff like, for example, letting you change the endpoint. There is some service, the, the ML, the machine learning service, that makes you do this. Because to get results from the machine learning, you have to tell it to go to another DNS endpoint, and that's implemented. But I put this here uh, so you can also see that if we do some type of server that emulates EC2 or SQS, uh, we could all we could point pause to the stub server so so we could or test an implementation or yeah, do, do you guys know the fake redis um, project it's basically a redis implementation it, i think it's in python it it, it 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 emulates a redis server without redis it's not it's redis written in python for you to test. So basically, with pause, it's it's previewed that that you can that you can point it to your own local servers or implementations. So for example, you can use DynamoDB local. That's uh, that, that's um, an, an an implementation of DynamoDB that runs on your local machine and AW, it's an official AWS implementation. So you can test how your application works with DynamoDB. But uh, of course, I, I think there's some project uh, over there written in Ruby that's like fake SQS. So we could point pause to that, that those fake SQS services. Another question that comes up from time to time is how do you work with more than one region? So the, the trick here is that you just use more than one instance. You just say, give me an EC2 instance that's bound to this region and another one that's bound to this one. And you just call the methods on them. If you want to use more than one account, this also comes up. Uh, you bind same service, different credential providers. And we'll see how we can even roll, roll our own things out. So take a look in the examples folder. Normally, the, the advanced stuff is in examples. It's also in the test suite, but I'm not going to make you read the test suite because that's not documentation. The examples are examples for you guys to consume. The tests are for crazy people like me. So that, that, that's Pause 201, you're graduated again, if you understand. So, bit more, pause 301 would be writing your own stuff. Making pause do different things. So, let's take a look at how to write your own credential provider. And this is fairly easy. You just make a moose class, and you say, with pause credential. And that role requires you to implement three of the most complex methods you'll ever write. Secret key, access key, and secret token. If you implement these three methods, get them, and you return those pieces of data, pause will happily use your credential provider. Where will you get those credentials from? I don't know. I don't care. <laughs> uh, you could get them off of disk in an encrypted file. You could uh, call another service to get them. Pause has the basics for uh, uh, for you to roll out your your own your own provider. So if the defaults are not good for you guys, so do it your own way. And colors, colors are a bit more complex because they do I.O. So uh, they're just two rows. That's the complexity instead of one, two. 
uh, you could so the basic one is this one the pause net color role and you have to implement this method send request it gets a service object and a call object the call object represents the parameters of what's been passed to the method call the service is the is the moose service the the class for moose so you can introspect metadata from it if you want uh, but basically what this wants you to do is do the HTTP call with your favorite library and if something went badly throw a pause exception object and if not just call handle response with the same call object and the status that came from your HTTP library the content that came from your HTTP library in the headers too if there's uh, an error for the service so this is the the exception is just for the um, for the errors that come from your HTTP user agent so don't try to look into the content and see if there's an error for the service because this guy this handle response will do that for you you just have to to say something went very very bad if for example you couldn't resolve DNS you can throw a pause exception from there and uh, this this role the retry color role basically will look at the services and see uh, and make pause retry HTTP requests if the service said that there was an, an error so uh, AWS specifies types of errors and there are retryable errors and non retryable errors and this retry color role looks at it and says okay it's a uh, 503 our recall and does exponential back off with a bit of jitter so if you're calling stuff in parallel you uh, they won't align uh, so uh, so if you don't want the retrying just take that off of your caller but I, I recommend that you really use the retrying because the retrying logic comes for free basically so huh, now you've really graduated from pause 301 now you can do advanced stuff and now comes the hacking part you know, 401 really the internals what's happening inside of pause when you call a method and I, the letter do, do you read this no it's not readable ah, it is oh. okay so basically when you call a method from an object the arguments the key values we convert them into moose objects okay these moose objects basically validate that the that the parameters that you passed are the things that were required or are in the format that that's expected then it sends that call object to to a subclass of, of one of these because AWS uh, says, says they say they have rest API's these are all rest API's do you think that they are all the same I can tell you that no okay they're all rest API's but every one of them has their special thing some of them you have to pass the parameters via the query string and receive them in XML format other ones you have to pass some parameters via the URL and some headers and receive the response in XML others you have to send the parameters in the body as a JSON encoded document and receive the response as a JSON encoded document and others mm -hmm. uh, want you to encode the parameters in the for the request as JSON some of them in the URL and you get back JSON so uh, each one of these is uh, will handle each type of service the service classes have metadata about which type they are these are basically roles on each service class so 
pauses in introspecting the classes and saying, okay, I'm a, I'm a query. I'll do things like a query, uh, like a query class. Those new subjects get converted to a pause net app API request. And that's basically the same as an HTTP request. If you look at that, uh, at that object, it has headers, content, URL, and it's, it's, basically, it's basically an HTTP object, but it's intermediate, so, uh, so the implementation didn't get uh, tied to any specific HTTP object, okay? So after that, the request is signed, so we take your access key, your secret key from wherever they came, we sign the, the request, the signature is put in an HTTP header, and off it's sent to the service. So, lots of logic in here. Depends on the metadata from the from the objects. This metadata is, is really auto-generated. We'll see that later. What happens to the response? So once we get the response, we get it in we get it in XML or in JSON. First, what we need to, to say is if was this an internal error or not? Retry with the retry logic and goes to the, the to the next level that takes that response and says, okay, it's XML or JSON and converts the content into a data structure, and that data structure gets coerced into objects. And those are the objects, that those are the objects that you finally receive when you're using, when, when you've called a method. And of course, all the process to turn these data structures into objects are really in moose. We're looking at the meta metadata in the objects and we're saying, okay, I'll find this object in this part of the, in, in this part of the response. So, so we'll instance this object with this piece and this piece and this piece and then return. And the, really the metadata uh, the, the pieces of information that say pause SQS, send message, has a parameter that's called message, that's a string, and uh, another parameter that's, uh, I don't know, a request ID and blah, blah, blah. All of this is specified in some, let's call them configuration files that AWS um, made in their uh, SDKs. They're not official definitions, so they're in their format. You could s assimilate them t to Swagger, and basically we parse those, their big JSON files that say, okay, you have this method with these parameters of this type and blah, blah, blah. With this, we generate Moose classes, and those are the classes that are used to, to assemble the requests. So also, uh, well, we generate classes for, for what are called the, the actions, the methods, the inputs, and the outputs. And, we ge and the HTML documentation uh, is generated too. So the pod that you see in pause, if you don't like it, I'm, okay, I, I, I'm well aware that it, it, it isn't the best documentation, but it's auto-generated. So it comes, the, the documentation really comes from AWS. Uh, we just put it there in the pod, so you don't have to look up their documentation to use pods. And um, if you want to contribute anything, you can try to clone a pause and say make gen classes, and it will take the, the, the JSON definitions and generate all the pause classes for all the services. There's like 60 something services. I, I just bash on one or two, EC2, SQS, uh, but there's lots. And, uh, and, and basically you're off. After that you can call the services. 
So we have those, we have code generators for every type of service. So the queries, the JSONs, the REST JSONs, the REST X, XMLs, these are the things that take the definitions and convert them into basically Moose classes. And it leaves them all into autolib instead of lib. In lib, there's the code that, that the programmers write and in autolib, it's all auto-generated code. So normally if, if you want to hack in autolib, it's possible, but uh, I won't accept a pull request because we really have to touch these things to generate the classes uh, as we want it. But uh, there's no problem because uh, if you really hack something into autolib, I'll take a look at the pull request and I'll try to correct. And because normally it's a bug and it can be applied to lots more services. So I, I prefer to correct the things in the auto generators first. And uh, of course, I'm trying to make you guys hack something into POS. Uh, the things like last year, these were things that had to be done. Some of them are done. Lots of other things have been done, but there was one big thing, retrying, automatically retrying and taking that burden off of you uh, is done, so yay. Uh, but some APIs generate page results. So uh, you have to call lots of time. Is, so if you have a DynamoDB collection with a thousand uh, items and DynamoDB returns 100 by 100, by 100 you have to make 10 calls. So uh, we want to include an API that will auto iterate for you and call a callback for every item that is there. So you can do stuff with the collections without having to iterate uh, yourself and do the calls yourself. Uh, more of that, waiting for a certain condition. There are some, uh, some API calls. When you call, um, like run instances to create a server, the APIs tell you that the server is being created. They return immediately, but the server is not on. It doesn't have network connectivity yet. So, uh, and the APIs return a response saying that it's being created. The status is creating. So, uh, waiter, what would what uh, what it would do would would say, okay, please return when the server is running, and it will query the it will do calls until the status is running, and then return. So, y so you can basically have the assertion that the server is in running state without having you uh, to, to do all the, uh, without having to do the loop until it's running. Um, DynamoDB as document store. Uh, the thing is that the Dyn DynamoDB API requires that you send in JSON in a specific format. And uh, one guy has contributed a small module that takes plain hash refs and arrays and converts them into DynamoDB format. So uh, for now, pause won't go into this uh, into this endeavor <laughs> because really it's already been contributed by someone and it works well with pause. So no problem there. Also, another thing there is that uh, the um, the method calls are basically stateless. They're not object oriented. So if you tell AWA pause to give you a list of servers, when you want to, for example, terminate the server, you have to call with the instance ID of that server. So I uh, want to make the API a bit more friendly and have a terminate method on the instance object that will take the instance ID and call the correct method call for you. Uh, also, there are some, some special properties. So there are some APIs that return 
things in base 64 in Yuri escaped uh, that I'd like that to be handled by pause automatically for you so, so you don't have to Yuri escape those results and there's uh, another thing that I would love to have is that right now you just install pause and you get all of the 60 services and it's it's quite big ish it's like one meg of meg and a half of code um, I like to split pause into different cpan modules so you install pause sqs pause ec2 and you just get that functionality and you don't drag along the 50 services more uh, but uh, it's using this Zilla we're using this Zilla now and I don't know enough about this Zilla to do this so help I hope that in a Perl conference someone knows how to do this uh, so uh, another of my personal objectives is to help whoever uses pause help the developers test better their code so that's why the, the response recorder and the, uh, I, I want to make it official and not in the, the tests in the test suit because that will help you guys build more robust code and uh, the support for S3 is still not there yet uh, we have a very good module called net S3 I think uh, that uh, that's works okay so it has not been one of my top priorities because also the S3 API is special-ish in its own way normally when they come up with a new service I'll generate it without problems and it will work the JSON the, the JSON services and the query services get auto-generated without problems, but the rest services are a bit trickier. So, and S3 is one of the rest XML services and it's, it's, it's special. So, so it still doesn't work, not all the functionality works. And I want to build a bit more community. There we are actively accepting contributions 25 people have sent in stuff, so it seems like a module that people use to do stuff. Does anyone here use it? <laughs> Yay! <laughs> no, there's more. There's more than Katki there. <laughs> so uh, if you really want to contribute, I'm thinking of, uh, please, please come and, and let's see what we can do if you guys want like a mailing list or or something uh, or somewhere where we can communicate better than just a uh, github repository uh, so but and if with that 401 lesson you want to contribute just go to this URL that you don't see probably it's github and if you if you search for AWS SDK Perl it, it will pop up uh, so, um, so please, 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 uh, I, I really, I really appreciate the work that has been done by community members finding bugs, uh, doing crazy stuff. So, uh, so please, please, please do contribute and come here uh, so we can coordinate. And basically, I consider the code like beta but I really don't want to break anything for you guys, so I don't know if you're running it in production, at least at Capside we are, uh, so, so I'm not very eager to break things, uh, but I would want feedback uh, from you guys, so please, please do. That's it. <laughs>